The Jenko dynasty began as a minor family of merchants, rather than the larger and more established noble families of the Necrontier Empire. Following the carnage of the First Wars of Succession, the Triarch tasked the most powerful dynasties across what remained of the Necrontier Empire to establish for themselves an informal network of informants to relay intelligence on individuals and groups involved in sedition or separatism. Given as all the formal military and intelligence resources had been focused on the disastrous conflicts with the old ones, the dynasties had to become more creative, and attention soon coalesced around civilian and mercantile organizations with reach and influence across the stars. Starting in the ports and markets of the Necrontier economy, the Jenko family's web of amateur spies soon matured and began branching out into extortion and blackmail. It's unknown if this was by design or circumstance. At this point, the family was wise enough to avoid investigating the royal families of the Empire, given their current weakness, and instead focused on lower echelon officials and smaller merchant houses. A few high-profile accusations were all that were needed to earn the Jenko the patronage and material support from the royal dynasties, keen to show their patriotic fervor and commitment, even if the evidence was somewhat light. If a few innocent pen pushers got caught up in the sweeps, that was the price of eternal vigilance. As the war with the Old Ones expanded, the strains on the Necrontier Empire grew. Resources were becoming scarce, and non-essential ships were appropriated for the war effort. Being a large trading house, the Jenko family were given permission by the Triarch to augment their merchant and cargo ships with armaments, and, more importantly, were allowed to militarize their private security contractors by equipping them with military-grade weapons and armor. This freed the professional military from having garrison ports and trading hubs, as security now the responsibility of the Jenko's family private army and navy, although they were astute enough never to use those terms openly. As the war ground on, the Jenko family came to dominate swathes of activity in the economic hubs of the Empire, and through a mixture of bribes and threats to custom officials, the Jenko and its agents ensured that their trade and those of compliant locals got through, while that of their rivals was impounded, delayed, or seized on suspicious charges. With the near monopoly on interplanetary trade in some sectors, the wealth of the Jenko grew rapidly, though they were still officially civilians. Their network of agents had by now become an invisible law unto themselves, a trend exasperated as local police were drafted into the military and the government became more reliant on the private sector for security. Local thugs in the pay of the Jenko and its agents began employing brutal methods to extract information from real or perceived enemies of the Empire. As the anti-separatist organization was never officially sanctioned, this de facto secret police had no formal name and came to be known by several monkeys. The most popular was the Shadow's Grasp, as suspects were seemingly snatched away during the ever-increasing blackouts, never to be seen again. The Jenko Dynasty, as it eventually called itself, now felt confident enough to start targeting the weaker noble families. Torture extracted false confessions from acolytes were combined with fabricated documents and presented as evidence of sedition to the heads of the ruling house. They were given the chance to pay to make the evidence go away, or risk ruin when the dossiers were handed to the silent king. Extortion of noble households, a near monopoly on trade, and vast web of illicit activity swelled the coffers of the Jenko dynasty, even as the war with the old ones was draining life out of the Necrontier government and society. But the nadir of the dynasty had been reached. The rapid expansion of its quasi-secret police was causing it to lose control, the savagery of the Shadow's Grasp made it more hated than the old ones. Paranoia gripped the new head of the Jenko dynasty, a vain and spiteful son who flaunted his wealth on follies and monuments, even when the war was causing untold hardship on the citizenry. Worse still, fighting had broken out among factions, and arms of the Jenko's state within a state for the richest postings. The flexibility and informality of the Jenko that had served it so well at its inception was now proving its downfall. With no formal hierarchy or command structure, the Jenko family's control was maintained through violence and bribery. The local agents who formed its nodes of control were being killed off by pretenders and deputies quicker than the family could keep track of. The paranoia of the family bled into its proxies, with port agents engaging in random purges, trying to preempt real or imagined coups. 
Some ports even went completely dark, as asinine conflict consumed the entire system. Witnessing the turmoil and sensing their chance to quash this reckless upstart, several noble dynasties began secret talks to move against the seemingly out-of-control Jenko dynasty and its allies. The reckoning, however, never arrived. While the Silent King made his faithful pact with the Catan, the Necrontier as a race were effectively extinguished, their consciousness being stripped from their frail bodies, becoming entombed in the living metal skeletons in the process of biotransference. The Necrons were born. Loyalty and unity would be the default settings of the Silent King's new command protocols, the royal families and dynasties being only faintly more independent than the lowliest foot soldier. Like their counterparts across the upper reaches of the Empire, however, their ill-gotten wealth of the Jenko dynasty allowed them and their vassals to buy the very best necrodermis bodies and retain the bulk of their persona. Never having a formal army, the Jenko dynasty entered the long sleep comparatively poorly endowed with heavy weapons and vehicles, and with relying not on the usual legions for infantry, but on the small units of mercenaries that had remained loyal to it. Its small army notwithstanding, the Jenko may have one of the largest fleets of any dynasty in the 41st millennium. Given that so many of the Empire's designated warships were destroyed during the War in Heaven, while the Jenko's auxiliary fleet was kept far from the front lines, on patrol and anti-piracy duties. The dynasty's flagship, the Storm's Herald, is a former bolt carrier. Its cavernous port and starboard cargo bays, modified to hold hundreds of gorse turrets, rivaling some Imperial striker cruisers in broadside capability. The long sleep was not without its troubles though. The narcissism, paranoia and spite of the young Pharon were sent into overdrive, and he emerged more insufferable than ever. For humans unfortunate enough to find themselves on a Jenko tomb world, life is brutal and short. When not suffering random paranoia-induced indiscriminate purges, the population is worked to extinction. Those enslaved by the dynasty are first forced to strip the planet of anything valuable to state the Jenko's hardwired and insatiable avarice. Vast vaults of jewellery, ores, paintings, and even mere timber are maintained around the tomb on concentric circles. To seeming no practical use, simply having these riches is the end in itself. Once the world's wealth is hoarded, the survivors are put to work, erecting cyclopean monuments to the pharaoh. Rogue traders have reported dead worlds with the Jenko's crests carved into the side of mountains, palaces built but seemingly never used, and even lakes rerouted by hand to form palatial gardens in the classical, high style. <laughs>